Hey folks, it's Anna McHugh. I am spending a little bit of time with a lovely collection of Omphalatus eludens, commonly called the jack-o'-lantern mushroom. This is one of our fall species uh, that I really enjoy finding. They are toxic and every year we do have some people who mistake these for chanterelle mushrooms. I'm going to go into why they are not chanterelles, but uh, also talk a little bit about Omphalatus poisoning and the different species that we have uh, in North America and uh, in Europe. So uh, Omphalatus eludens is pretty stinking common. It often comes up in these uh, huge blooms. This is the very first thing that you can, uh, you know, distinguish between this mushroom and chanterelles. Chanterelles never do this. And they all, you know, they grow at the base of trees oftentimes, but they're these really big clusters. They pop up all at once. You just have to put a little pressure at the base and they all come up in one piece. So uh, again, chanterelles, you know, sometimes they twin up um, or, you know, sometimes you'll find them in, in small clusters, but that's pretty uncommon. Typically they're, you know, in ones and twos. So you certainly don't see, uh, you know, massive fruiting bodies like this. Uh, that said, they do have a couple of similarities. They're really quite, um, you know, superficial, but I will go through them and also, you know, the identification of this mushroom. But before I do, I want to talk about uh, Omphalatus poisoning and, uh, you know, concerns around it. This is not considered a deadly mushroom by any stretch. Uh, the uh, gastrointestinal distress that's associated with it starts really rapidly, you know, between two and four hours after eating it. And then uh, within 18 hours or so, uh, people typically have recovered. Uh, that said, you know, people do go to the emergency department and they're given activated charcoal, sometimes put on an IV because they're uh, losing, you know, uh, important nutrients from both ends. Um, you know, typically it's just vomiting, but uh, you can also have, gosh, I think it's up to 50 to 70% also on the other end as well. Uh, weakness and dizziness are also common and sometimes, uh, you know, excessive sweating. So the whole thing is really quite, uh, you know, unpleasant, but again, is pretty uh, short, you know, short lasting. So as far as identification of this mushroom, um, you know, it is a reasonably simple affair. First of all, we just don't have a lot of mushrooms that are this brightly colored and this big, uh, and also that grow in these big clusters. You do have clustering mushrooms, but like that combination of features, typically, you know, this is one of those mushrooms you can easily hunt from the car. You'll just see basically, uh, you know, what looks like a, a giant, you know, um, malformed. Sometimes it looks like chicken of the woods, uh, lady porous mushrooms, which are very popular and also orangey. But as soon as you approach it and you're like, oh, that's a huge, you know, hunk of mushrooms. Typically you can say, okay, that's Omphalatus eludens if you're on the East coast of the United States. Uh, but you know, when you look at the fruiting body more, uh, you know, you can see some of the reasons that people might mistake this for a chanterelle. We have gills that are decurrent, meaning they run down the stem. That is one of the primary things that is mentioned in, uh, identity identification literature for chanterelle mushrooms. And so, you know, people are like, well, it runs down the stem, so it must be good. Uh, that being said, you don't have wrinkly gills. You have true gills on Omphalatus mushrooms. Whereas when you're looking at a chanterelle, these, uh, you know, gills are false gills. So they're forked, they're wrinkly, they uh, scrape off relatively easily, and they're definitely not like deep, what a, a field guide would describe as deep and blade-like gills, which is what Omphalatus has. Uh, another distinguishing feature that I can show you here is the, uh, the color of the flesh. So uh, chanterelle mushrooms are typically white on the inside. Omphalatus is white-ish, but it's definitely more in the orange and carrot uh, sort of color. So it's a little bit lighter on the inside. You don't have significant staining or reactions of that sort. Uh, so Omphalatus eludens also is, uh, in some cases, bioluminescent and will uh, fluoresce sort of a green color. I haven't tested this particular batch and I have never seen bioluminescent uh, Omphalatus. I collect at least a few of them every year and uh, I've never seen them. But nonetheless, Halloween is coming up. This is one of the uh, species that I would consider a harbinger of fall and uh, nicely matches our, uh, you know, sort of fall ecosystem and the colors that are starting to emerge. Um, on the subject of Omphalatus from a chemistry perspective, the, uh, you know, culprit that uh, causes people to be poisoned by this is called eludin. 
and uh, that actually has pretty strong antibacterial compounds and also has been um, implicated, researched, and is in uh, a uh, experimental drug for uh, cancer treatment because I guess it has some fairly unique properties as far as doing uh, genetic damage to tumors. That said, that research, I don't know what the status of it is, and um, I believe the literature I was looking at is, you know, anywhere between 10 and 15 years old. So uh, that said, you know, Aludin, um, it's, there are two uh, compounds, S and T, um, which is, I guess, I don't know exactly why they have those designations. Um, but uh, again, there is some interest in the, um, specifically, uh, you know, cancer potential or cancer treatment potential for Aludin uh, S. But uh, that being said, it is so very toxic to people and you know, you just can't keep it down. The question is, could you, you know, synthesize something based on the alludins that are found in natural species and uh, use them effectively? And I guess there is a, a pharmaceutical company that has done precisely that, but we're in the experimental phase with that specific drug. And, uh, and again, the literature I was looking at is pretty elderly. So I don't know if, uh, you know, those uh, trials have concluded, but this is not on, you know, <laughs> we don't have, uh, to my knowledge, jack-o'-lantern based uh, medicines on, uh, you know, on the market either for cancer or other applications. So as far as uh, the distribution of Omphaletus alludens, it is very common on the East Coast. Uh, it grows in, uh, you know, the North Carolina Piedmont, oftentimes at the base of big oak trees. That's where I found this one. Uh, and, you know, they're, they're presumably growing on the, the root system there and are uh, decomposers. That is their lifestyle. Style. I guess you can find them west of the Rocky Mountains. They also have uh, Omphalatus olivescens. That is called the jack-o'-lantern mushroom on the west coast. So that is, uh, you know, their Tupac to our biggie, if you will. Um, we also, on the other side of the Atlantic, have uh, Omphalatus olieris. And uh, similarly, like all of these species are toxic. They look very similar, uh, but, you know, are, are genetically distinct. So um, long and short is that this is a really recognizable mushroom. These big, fat, you know, individuals are really, uh, you know, something that you just don't see a lot. They're really sort of uh, fibrous. So I don't know if you can hear the snapping that I'm making, but it, it's really, uh, you know, they're tough and fibrous and they have a good uh, sort of consistency for breaking apart. I don't know if they're any good in mushroom fights, but I would imagine that they are. They may sort of uh, stress the limits of acceptability because they're so hefty and I don't don't think they explode the way they might have to to be you know truly good ammunition for a fair and equitable mushroom fight but uh, I'm going to stop shredding these mushrooms I'm going to remove them from my property uh, that's one final note you know when it comes to toxic mushrooms I do have dogs and so I err on the side of caution and toss things over the fence all the time um, I guess uh, I actually did look at some uh, veterinary literature and uh, there is concern about omphalatus uh, for, you know, other mammals and um, pigs in particular were mentioned as actually having, you know, potentially deadly events with this. But, you know, as with anything that uh, decomposes and starts to smell stinky and maybe meaty, uh, I don't want to tempt my dogs. And I know that, uh, you know, there's a lot of species that can cause a good bit of harm or at the very least, you know, that uh, up front and um, down below distress that no pet owner or uh, owner of a human belly wants to deal with. So uh, in conclusion, this is one of my favorite fall mushrooms just from a like aesthetic perspective. Do uh, avoid them, they smell pleasant but they uh you know are not chanterelles they're much much larger than chanterelles that's another thing to bear in mind uh but you know nonetheless you'll almost uh if you're looking out you'll almost certainly see them uh at some point in your mushroom hunting career 